March 1st so it's a holiday here in Korea and I'm gonna meet a friend today we try to meet up whenever we have free time because he's quite busy with his schedule and quite busy with mine as well also he lives south so he lives in the Gangnam area and I'm over north so yeah it gets a little tricky trying to plan things but I'll be with him today in Hapchong, Hongdae area, and we're gonna just go to a cafe and then meet up for Dakbar with my husband later. Part of the reason why I wanted to do a video with Riley is because he is, he finished his apprenticeship, but he was a tattoo apprentice for a artist here in Korea, and he is now trying to get some more clientele, so I wanted to talk to him about his experience and also kind of put his name out there. Maybe. People who are interested in tattoos who see this video will want to go and meet Riley, check out his work, and get something done by him. I'm pretty lazy, so I, I want to learn how to do makeup properly. Lately, all I really do is I get my eyelashes permed. I actually went to a color analysis person to talk about what colors suit me for clothing as well as makeup. I'm a summer light, so I should be wearing gray eyeliner. And I should be wearing more natural looking makeup and not go too heavy. And it should make my skin look more glossy. Yeah. So no like matte finishes or anything like that. So I learned a trick from Rachel who is very well known here in Korea. And I tried to follow her little BB cream trick here. Look guys, I'm really incompetent. Um... I'm gonna try it again. She said, okay, put a little BB cream on your hand and then put it evenly on the edge of the, what do you call this? So you're supposed to put it evenly and then do a 90 degree angle and lightly go down and then just back like da, 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 da. And I freaking messed it up. So let's try it again. Like here, oh my God. She made it look really easy, but okay, well, actually, this is going better than yesterday. It's just like, yeah, lightly like this. Because the lady I spoke to said that I should have a more glossy finish and not like too thick of a look on my, for my face. I'm a little worried I'm going heavy on this, but you know what? It's, it's a learning curve, you know? It's okay if I don't look great in a video because I f my makeup. Dab, 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 dab. I don't know if anyone else um, had a similar situation growing up, but my mom always told me not to wear makeup because it will age me. And I took that literally, like, oh my god, putting makeup on my face is going to ruin my skin and make me make my skin go bad. Um, but I think what she really meant was it just makes you look more mature. She didn't want me putting um, creams and stuff on my face. Her other reasoning was like, makeup's so expensive. And I was like, okay, I mean, that makes sense. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like, people who choose not to wear makeup, that's totally cool. But for me, personally, like, I've always been okay with not wearing makeup. I've just become more interested in learning the basics. It is nice to sit down and like, like, this is kind of relaxing. But I don't know, you guys. Like, you know, this... Anyway, so here I am. I'm finally taking that initiative to learn how to apply... I don't need to be patting my face still. This is just like, did that even do anything? Honestly, does my face look even different? Okay, I did one eye. Can you even, ooh, look at that light. Oh yes, blinding. Okay, eyeliner applied. Last thing is just my, cause I got my eyelash perm three days ago now. So I just kind of apply it, the actual juice itself. I find it easier to apply it on the eyelash and then use a separate eyelash comb to push my eyelashes out. Just gently combing 
to maintain the shape of my eyelash. Now I'm gonna go eat some brunch and head out. He looks kind of weird up close, like a little monster. True. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Everyone has the flag out for the holiday. In America, people just leave their flags up, but in Korea, you just put up the flag for holidays. All right, we are in Hapjong. This is Riley. It's cold. So Riley and I have known each other like all, seven years. Almost seven years because yeah. we went to we, we came worked, to Korea at the same time. Yep, and worked at the same school out in Goje Island. Yeah, Goje though, which is like country town. How do you feel about Goje? It's dope. Anyway, if you've never been to Goje, recommend Blue Water. Um, but Lots yeah, it's of just good hiking. Hiking, uh, seafood. Yeah. Behind. Cool. All right, let's go in. We've been in Korea, like I said, six and a half ish, almost seven years. Yeah. August or July? August. July. I'm like 90% sure I came here in July. I'm like 100% I was like August 17th. What was your first tattoo in Korea? The cookie monster eating a skull from ZZ. And the stick and poke look was really cool with the, it was like neon? Yeah. yeah he is neon color. Okay, how many tattoos do you have now? Oh, somewhere around 30. Which area of the body, if you had to pick one, what hurt the worst? Shin right. hurts so bad. You were I sick think or something. That, right? I did have like the flu while doing that. Mm. And I think that was part of it. Mm -hmm. That artist also dry wipes. He doesn't wet mm -hmm. the paper towel. Mm -hmm. And dry wiping hurts so bad. I think honestly, I'd go with the elbow because it's smaller than my shin one and it hurt probably just as much. When people ask, well, what's the most painful place for a tattoo? I feel like there's so many factors. Like one, what is your condition that day? So I have a stick and poke from ZZ. The stick and poke on the ribs, it's not a big tattoo. It's like this big. It took like three hours of him just one needle at a time in my rib. So that was honestly really painful. And it's also like you have needle sizes. It's like if you're doing fine yes. line tattoo versus like a bold thick line tattoo. It's of course our opinion. We're not saying don't do this part of your body because it might honestly, depending on the size and the like boldness, like yep. Riley said of the lines and the color, if you're using color, for me, it's the Something white, the white at the end. The dude. white highlights. But whenever the artist is like, we're almost done, I honestly, that's when I want to cry because I know what's coming. Surprisingly, this really hurt when it got to the yellow. Yeah, LD's tattoo, um, when he got to the yellow ginkgo leaves, I was like, bruh. Why is it so appealing to people to get tattoos here? The big thing in Korea is it's not as saturated of a market because in the US, it's not easy to open a tattoo shop, mm -hmm. but you can open a tattoo shop. In Korea, you technically can't. When you do get a tattoo in Korea, it's not one of those things where you do a walk-in. You have to hit them up ahead of time, and usually they don't reveal their address or anything until the day of. Very much on the DL, yep. um, still, because I think it's that's illegal. The other like big difference between America and Korea, the walk-in culture. Tattoo shop in um, the US, they can market themselves, they can put out ads, they can have like, their art put up on a window. In Korea, that's impossible. Right. You can't, you have to hide your studio. So mm -hmm. the only way you get clients is through Instagram. Mm -hmm. In terms of business, the Korean tattoo artists tend to have less clients. It's the, the barrier of entry isn't as high in the US. But the apprenticeships are much longer in the US. They can be, it seen. kind of depends on, that's the other thing is with apprenticeships is it's all over the board. Mm -hmm. um, that's why, I have one friend who's in San Diego right now and he just finally got like his first real like tattoo job, mm -hmm. but he's been through like six different apprenticeships. I guess the other thing would be pricing. If you're getting a big tattoo, mm -hmm. it's usually cheaper in Korea than yes. it is in the US because they charge per piece rather than per hour. And they'll tell you straight up how much that's going to cost. For the client. You just know what you're paying. You know what you're paying. But at the same time, for the artist, tattoo is just taking longer and then they end up getting compensated less for the time that they invested in it mm -hmm. because 
that was the price that they quoted at the start. Mm -hmm. How much was your sleeve? I think in total, this probably cost me like maybe 2.5 million won, 2 which is like, that's like 2, a little US over $2,000. dollars yeah. The artists do need to make a living. So prices are going up in Korea and it's getting a little bit more expensive. Artists are also trying to leave Korea. Yeah, it's one where the law is not being it's not being legalized anytime soon for sure. No, and so that's why a lot of them are doing guesswork or trying to get working visas abroad. And suddenly, like two years ago, Riley's like, you know, Yoon is asking for apprentices. I think I'm gonna take her up on it and, and try out an apprentice. And I was like, Riley, can you draw? No. So how did you get into I mean obviously you knew you yeah so pretty much what happened was it's just like I got the tattoo in Korea and then I just really enjoyed the experience and the artwork so then I started getting more and as I started getting more I liked the art more but it also the different artists that I met like I've kept in contact with quite a few of my tattoo artists that I've received pieces from um, and I just kind of like liked that atmosphere and that mm -hmm. environment I had just gotten another tattoo from Yoon. She was doing a project where she was trying to make tattoos based off people's personalities. Yes. And we finished that tattoo. She was like, oh, I'm thinking of taking on any apprentices. And she made the joke, she's like, you already look like a tattoo artist because you're mostly covered in tattoos. Have you thought about learning to tattoo? And I responded with, uh, I don't know how to draw. But she just said, don't worry. I'll teach you from like the ground up. We'll start with color theory and move on from there. A lot of times, if you want to do an apprenticeship in the U.S., they say go to that studio, get to know the artists and stuff get like that, get from tattoos them. from them, yes. and then start to try and like bre breach that barrier, which is essentially what happened with Yoon is I got a tattoo from her a few years ago. We stayed in contact, stayed friends. We hung out from time to time. I don't have the like basic background, so like drawing on paper for me is so hard because I never learned how to draw on paper. It's just easier to upload and make flash work on an iPad and upload it onto Instagram. She was like, you probably should know how to use like an iPad for drawing as well. So I got an iPad and then started working from there that I'm almost like solely iPad trained for drawing. Um, the actual like class classes lasted about six months. Essentially what happened is it was like four months of just kind of like drawing. Okay. And then there was about two months of fake skin kind of practice oh, and then okay. that's when she started kind of being like hey let's get you in instagram and like okay. figure out how that works kind of taught me some of the basics and then after that that's when i did like my first self tattoo okay and started just doing self tattoo practice and offering to tattoo friends for free how is your clientele right now like almost zero <laughs> and how many people have you tattooed i think in my like two years i think i've done a total if we don't count myself tattoos yeah you can't count yourself uh i think i've only done maybe like 10. i still don't always charge okay. it kind of depends on the design and what they want but if it's something i'm confident in then i'll charge like a small fee is it just that you're not getting a lot of connection yet? one because i'm in korea and i'm a foreigner um, it's, hard. it's hard to find clients other than other foreigners. Also, it's just one where Instagram is a love-hate relationship. Trying to get the algorithm to work the way that you need it to mm. is incredibly difficult. So I imagine probably not a lot of people are seeing my designs. You bought yourself a tattoo machine. Yes. And then how much do you pay, uh, put towards rent every month for the studio? Uh, 300000 so some cheap money. So he's working at an international school, mm. which means, I'm just doing this because it's not like, it's not recognized the one that I'm the picturing country. in my yeah. head. And so you're making pretty good money. Yep. If I didn't have that job, I wouldn't be able to do the tattooing. I have to buy my own needles. I have to buy my own black ink. Okay. And we have colored ink in the mm. shop. Did but you use that? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. free to use, but it's just one where if there's a color that you want or something like that. And you have to order. Usually you have to buy it yourself. Again, going full circle back to tattooing being illegal in Korea. Getting tattoo ink in Korea is really difficult to do. That's why I've started applying to places in like Europe and things like oh, that. Oh, great segue. What is your goal for a long term? <laughs> like, are you going to plan to continue tattooing or do you want to continue teaching? Yeah, I'm like 50-50 on the teaching tattooing thing because I know okay. tattooing it's a very big risk. No really like steady income. It's either you get popular and then you make money or you end up needing to do another job on top of it. Because I think I'd still need to do like kind of tattoo training because Korean tattooing is a little bit different just in terms of 
sanitation standards and everything like that. Yeah, it's not right. necessarily unclean, but just there is no system in place. What uh, countries are you considering? I've US. sent U.S., um, Germany, Canada, mm -hmm. thought about Australia, but I couldn't find any work visas for Americans my age. Mm. Um, it's only up to 30? Yeah, up to 30 is the working holiday visa. Right. So I aged out of that one. You're an old man. We'll be heading out. We might, I guess, because we're not eating for a while, so maybe we'll hit up another cafe. Go get some dessert. I'll just end it here. Oh my God, it's an hour. walking home to get ice cream. How do you feel about tattoos? If it's done right, it's cool. Would you get a tattoo by Riley? Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> what are you buying? Oh, man, they don't have it. <gasps> Our ice cream? Yeah. Oh, no. They don't have it. But they have Hershey's. Hold on a second. I'm gonna really good chocolate ice cream. So good. It's um, the Hershey's is good too, but this other one is really, really good. But it's out, and that's what we were craving. Korean people fought for the independ independence. Damn straight. Happy March 1st to Korea and to all, but mostly to Korea. We made it home. Let's go see the baby's reaction. The baby. Baby Charlie. Mm -hmm. It feels so good to be home.